Oh. Well, hi for now, folks. This week has been the kind of week where you wake up a few minutes before your alarm and you're actually feeling pretty good. So you get up, get ready, and you're just about to leave for work when... Hello? Hi. Yeah? No, I'm fine. No, well, I'm on my way now. What, what do you mean? I've got loads of time. It's only... What? They went... They did what? Uh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. No, I'm, I'm coming right away. Uh, j -j just hold on. Hold on. I'll be right there. Yep, the clocks went forward last night. You know what I mean? The Graticast! Episode 36! Uh, yes, Chip knows he needs a haircut. Well, I have to say, folks, things were going pretty well for me towards the middle of last month. I got commissioned to write a book of children's stories for later on in the year. I was invited to present the keynote speech for a new writing festival in Aylesbury. And, oh yeah, there's pretty gorgeous news about the big girl in my life. Did I get those the right way around? You sure? Okay. Now, I know many of you have been waiting anxiously to hear the results of my random trip to Cyprus, all for a New Year's kiss. And, well, I would have told you already if it hadn't have been for other things cropping up. Exciting things, like all those interviews, but also annoying things, like the health and technology issues I suffered. Then I had the deadline for the book I was writing for the EU Lifelong Learning Program, uh, but the deadline for that was on the 22nd of May. So after that date, I knew I'd be able to unwind by creating for you the long-awaited sequel to our first video of 2015. But it turned out I didn't get to unwind. Instead, I got unraveled. You see, my EU publication was going to be turned into a glossy guide like this. And this one's in Turkish because, well, that's where it's from. Half of the project partners are in Turkey, and they also know some great designers and printers there who'd be able to take my words and put them into a fancy brochure like this that people might actually want to read. But no sooner had I submitted my final draft at the start of last week than I received an email from the project coordinator here in the UK saying... Nah, mate, we're going to print it over here. It's more expensive and we won't get a designer to work on it, but at least we won't have to carry them so far. Wait, what was that? It's more expensive and we won't get a designer to work on it. So instead of looking like this, my work would end up looking like this. Yeah, that'll make teachers all over Europe want to read it. So I wrote back, what if I design it myself? Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. You won't get any extra money, of course, but massive kudos. And it'll definitely get more readers. Just be sure you get it to us by the end of this week. Now, for those of you who aren't in the UK, we had a bank holiday the other Monday. Other countries might call this a national holiday or a federal holiday, but we call them bank holidays here because, well, that's their purpose. Most people in the country take a day off work in order to spend loads of money, thereby boosting the economy and racking up their personal debt, which ultimately benefits the banks. Why does this matter? Well, remember how I said... No sooner had I submitted my final draft at the start of last week, yep, that week started on Tuesday. This meant I had just four days to learn how to be a designer and design something eye-catching. Now just so you can understand how big a challenge this was, let me just explain that I once nearly got a parking fine because I described my car to the telephone ticketing system as purple. I got a whopping 3% in my final textiles exam at high school, and at the age of 10 I drew a picture of a cat which shocked my mum, who thought I'd given it a giant penis. So here, in order to succeed, I knew I would need some pictures from some people who could actually draw. So I messaged my sister, offering her a small sum in return for 20 pictures, drawn in 40 hours. Six hours later she still hadn't replied, so I started contacting professional illustrators I knew on the off chance that one of them wouldn't be busy. And fortunately the first one I got in touch with instantly accepted, just as my sister was sending her acceptance as well. But I didn't have a chance to tell one of them to stop working because I was too busy learning how to design a print quality magazine. 
So next thing I know, I'm paying a large sum for 40 pictures in 20 hours, while staying awake for 50 hours non-stop, all to produce a document for no extra money. I wouldn't even get royalties because, of course, the EU are distributing it for free. That could have seriously ruined my whole week. But you know what? I managed to keep going. Partly because the pictures produced by the illustrator and my sister were so awesome amazing and I was able to use both of them to give my work a real professional edge. Partly because I got taken to see a great production of the Wedding Singer musical by an amateur group in Ely which was fantastic. And partly because that same girlfriend supplied me with regular hot meals and coffee all while doing her day job and working on another amateur production. Seeing all these people pack so much amazing stuff into their spare time was truly inspirational. And even though, in the thick of it, it felt pretty crazy, the response of the project coordinator made it all worthwhile. I am really impressed with the design, colour and layout of this document. Well done! So a huge thank you to everyone who helped me through this week, which includes you guys for sharing the blessings you've been counting because that's great motivation too. Here's some of the ones we had on Facebook. Diana was very grateful for a clear CAT scan. Well, we can share that joy with you, Diana. We hope this means you can feel better soon. Alison felt blessed after spending some quality time with her family, which she doesn't get to do every day, unless you count her husband, of course. Like Jen, who expressed gratitude for her hubby's return from holiday safe and well. Thanks, Jen and Alison, for sharing. And Lucy was thankful to be among some 150 friendly faces as she made it to the curling quarterfinals. I guess your quarterfinal opponent must have been from Manchester, right, Lucy? They're pretty good at curling up there if the hairstyles on Coronation Street are anything to go by. But well done for getting as far as you did, and thanks for sharing your joy with us. Then over on Twitter, there were loads of thanks being offered by fans of this champion of smiles, Miss Binky B or Bianca, who has a great vlog right here on YouTube. Her fans were all grateful because Bianca's account was reinstated yesterday after being suspended for no reason. No, no reason. I think it was probably because there's someone at YouTube Command Central who really enjoys Bianca's videos and after getting their latest round of positive vibes just accidentally clicked the wrong button. So a big thank you to all you YouTubers out there who support vloggers like Bianca and me by keeping in touch and giving YouTube the great community spirit that it has. We honestly couldn't do it without you. And Bianca, I think we'll dedicate this week's gratitude to you because it's a fantastic pick you up tune. Nominated by Erica, it's Mika's new single, Talk About You. And I'll put the link to the full song at the end of this video. Do take a look and see if you agree with me that Mika looks rather Jim Carrey-ish in this video. So finally, thank you for watching. Please leave us a comment below to say how much you enjoyed this video and share it around your favourite social media. Before I leave you though, one last thing. If you ever feel like time is being taken away from you, remember, you can still enjoy the other flavours in the meal. Too much of one herb can be overpowering anyway. Stay thankful, and ciao for now.